Hey guys, what's up? Scotch Duck here once again. Right. Time for the obligatory end of the year video uh, coming from me here. So, yeah. First of all, first of all, okay, before I go into this, right, uh, the thing I gotta say, you know, in the whole year end review thing, the real thing I gotta say is thank you. Thank you to all you guys, okay, because obviously this year um, I decided to come back. Was it this year I decided to come back? Hold on. Yes, yes, I was right. It was uh, February 1st, 2015. I decided to do that little video where I'm like, okay, guys, I kind of want to come back. I'm still not sure about Let's Play, but I keep wanting to make videos. And yeah, 11 months later, and I'm still going. And I've had a lot of fun doing this again, you know. Um, I get a lot, of co I get a lot of comments and requests to go back to Let's Play, and honestly, guys, I'm still. Even all this time's passed, I'm still not sure where I want to go um, with that, you know. Uh, what I do know is though is that uh, I'm quite happy still doing this as is, you know, and we never know what the future is going to bring. So, uh, for those of you who want to see me go back to Let's Plays, I don't want to say hold your breath, I don't want to say coming soon, I just want to say we'll wait and see, you know. That's pretty much that. So, big thank you to you guys in that regard. Uh, you make it all worthwhile, all that jazz. Right. Um, but, with that said, so let's talk about this year in terms of the uh, gaming and all that. Now, this started off as the, you know, usual top 10 games of 2015. And, I gotta be honest guys, I was looking through all my games that I purchased in 2015. And I struggled, I struggled so hard to come up with 10 games that I'm like, right, this was the best, this was the best, this was the best, you know? It's not because I was spoiled for choice, because I didn't really have that much, you know? I actually recorded the top 10 games for 2015 uh, about last week, you know? And Devil's Third was in there, that's how bad it was, you know? Like, Devil's Third, even though that's a terrible game, I kind of enjoyed it, because it was so terrible, so I'm like, Okay, I like this more than, say, I don't know, some other obligatory um, AAA game that came out this year that had microtransactions or some publisher bullshit assigned to it. Even though Devil's Star does have publisher bullshit because it's got microtransactions as well, but I bought it used, so it's okay. So yeah, it was such a weird year for me in that case. I guess, like, I've kind of thought this for a good few years now, uh, but this year it really was just like, definite in my mind now, okay? I don't know if it's my age or something, but I'm very content with just like, you know, playing like older games, you know, I'm pretty much full on retro at this point, you know, like um, most of my time, like Dragon Quest, you know, I played like so many of those games this year, right? Uh, the Mother series, you know, I really caught into that as well, uh, amongst others, you know, it's just going back and playing loads of games and you know, trying to, like, uh, enrich my uh, backlog, if you know what I mean. It's like, oh yeah, beat that game, beat that game. That's that's pretty much all that matters to me at this time of my life, you know? Uh, and, of course, the other thing about it was is that, you know, looking at all the big sort of releases this year, even the ones that I would have been really interested in playing, I ended up not buying them or not playing them because they had some sort of, like, AAA publisher bullshit um, attached to them. Uh, let's name some examples, shall we? Batman Arkham Knight! There was that massive kerfuffle with the PC release of that game. Not to mention, right, you go into a shop, right, in, like, in the town, right, you typically can't buy a game brand new for any less than 50 quid, right? That's a lot of money, okay? But one of the things that just outright disgusted me this year is that I would walk into a shop, I'd see Batman Arkham Knight on the shelf, priced at 82 quid, and I'm like, Where's the other 32 quid coming from? And literally, you've got the case, right? And they probably did this in the back, right? The case is wrapped in cellophane with a little bit of cardboard that says Season Bass attached to it. And they just put that on the shelf and decide to charge 32 quid more than normal. And I'm just like, no, 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 I'm no buying that. Um, other games I bought this, that passed on this year was like, um, uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, you know? Uh, I chose not to buy that because, again, microtransactions, I'm just stubborn about that. But there was also that massive, like, uh, well, it's still going on, pretty much. The whole war between uh, 
the gamers and Konami. I was going to say like uh, Hideo Kojima and Konami, but Hideo Kojima has found a better place now with Sony, which is amazing. Uh, I'm really pleased about that, so now it's just Konami killing themselves slowly at this point, so yeah, there was that. And, and there were some, there were some really good games as well, you know, um, that I, I tried out. Like, I tried out Witcher 3. But I'm not, I'm really not a Western RPG guy, right? I thought The Witcher 3 would help me overcome that. And I put about 10 hours into it and I saw the quality of it. I was like, yeah, I can see why a lot of people really like this, but it didn't really grab me. And for the same reason, I didn't pick up um, Fallout 4, for example, and that, you know? Uh, and uh, Nintendo, Nintendo didn't have a really good year either. They had a few, like, really nice hits uh, for the Wii U, in fact, um, Hold on, let me uh, bring them up here. These two in particular, I want to talk about. Yeah. Like, uh, these these wouldn't have made, like, um, a Game of the Year list for me. Um, because, I, I don't know, I just didn't get into them as much, but at the same time, I have, like, this feeling of gratitude to Nintendo for going ahead and making them in the first place. Um, the first one was um, Splatoon. This has become a big hit, right? And I'm really pleased to see that. You know, it's great to see Nintendo try out a new IP and, like, it really paying off, you know? And, you know, the fact that... <laughs> there's, Like, just today, as I'm recording this, right, there's... I just saw on Twitter, new map added to Splatoon. They keep doing that. They have not, like, charged for a single thing for this game yet, have they? It's unbelievable, and that was Skype. I hate it when people are making videos and they don't turn off Skype so that when you are watching this video, you quickly look at your taskbar to see if some of these went on Skype, but it's not, it's just coming from the video. It's so annoying, isn't it? So, yeah, Splatoon's awesome, you know, it's like, yeah, but I guess I didn't really get into the multiplayer aspect that much. I played the single player, single player I actually liked, you know, if they do make a sequel, and let's face it, they'll make a fucking sequel. Uh, this is totally going to become like a big Nintendo franchise and we will totally see the inkling in the next Smash Brothers without a doubt. Um, you know, I would like to see an expanded single player on Slayer. That's just me, that's just me. And the other one obviously was um, Mario Maker here. This has uh, also been a big hit. And this is a game I've been asking for for years. Way back when I was playing Little Big Planet, I thought to myself, I really want Nintendo to just make this game, but with Mario, you know, like, and they did, and yeah, it was, uh, it was really good, I just didn't play it again as much, just didn't get into it, I was playing other stuff, I guess, so it's, it's weird, you know, it's like, there's two games that I can be really appreciative, appreciative of, but just, like, don't really feel the need to put in a top ten, you know, same with Witcher 3, and uh, another one that I've got up here in my shelf, actually, not even played yet, is a... Bloodborne. A lot of people love this one. Not played it yet. We'll hopefully get round to it. So, yeah, and I can't really see that um, changing in 2016, you know. Again, there will be games coming out that I'll want to play. You know, there will be games coming out that I'll be really excited for. But with the... I don't know. Again, it's me being old. It's definitely me being old. The way the gaming's coming to these days, you know. I'm more... I become more and more content with just like expanding on the retro games and stuff, you know, so um, that's what I think 2016 is probably going to do for me. Uh, but then again, you never know. We'll have to wait and see. So with that said, guys, I have... How many games do I have here? I have eight games here that I want to give, like, a sort of honourable mention to, I guess, you know? Like, uh, these were... Out of all the games that came out this, this year, these are the ones that I would say were kind of special and... I'm going to do these two right here first, actually, because they're kind of like weird choices, but I'm going to say them anyway. Um, first one was um, Majora's Mask 3D. You probably know what I mean by that right there. You know, it's like, oh, it's a 3D remake. Shouldn't count. <laughs> but it's Majora's Mask, so I kind of had to put it on here. Uh, and I got it with the uh, new Nintendo 3DS, which is a really good console, by the way. A really good version of the 3DS that I'm really glad I picked up. So, yeah. Gotta give it to that. I suppose in that, in the same token of regard, I gotta give it to uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Um, which was also... It was fucking Xenoblade on 3DS, you know, it's like... Of course I love it. Never actually beat that particular version of it, though. Uh, I've played the original version on the Wii multiple times, but not that one. But probably at some point. And uh, the other one that's uh, kind of weird, it's like, see, this is like... Um, 
this is again, this is again just suits like, um, this just tells you where my priorities are in like modern gaming, you know, it's like what I like to buy and what I enjoy the most. That's Namiku. Project Mirai DX. The I'm a Vocaloid fanboy, okay? And this is the best Vocaloid game there is, as far as I'm concerned. And the songs were really good. Everything about it was, like, really enjoyable to me. So, I gotta give it a mention, you know? It's like, my list, damn it, leave me alone. These really aren't in any particular order, incidentally. I'm just picking them up and talking about them. Okay. Um, the last one that's, uh, the last 3DS, I should say, uh, 3DS game, is uh, right here. Story of Seasons. Have you guys seen that new footage for the next Harvest Moon game that's going to be on mobile and apparently on the Wii U as well? Holy shit, Natsume, fucking stop! Oh, it's so it's so bad looking. It's so bad looking. But Marvelous Entertainment has us covered with this new franchise, which I hope just becomes the next best thing. You know, it's like. Marvelous, Marvelous was like, uh, fuck you, Natsume, we're gonna go hang about with X Seed and uh, we're gonna make a Harvest Moon game but not call it Harvest Moon. But it's really just as good as Harvest Moon, you know? Um, possibly the best Harvest Moon game I've played. Uh, I haven't played that many, admittingly. I'm still working my way through them. But a wonderful game, regardless, guys. And the European version uh, just came out like. Um, See, they, they, they released it just right at the end there of 2015, you know, it came, I think the official release date was like December 31st, uh, which is pretty mental. Uh, this American copy, which I've got here, came out in like February of 2015, so it totally counts for this, a game this year, uh, and uh, one that I enjoyed so much. So yeah, Story of Seasons, I gotta get this one. Major, major props, I loved it so much. Right, um, next we have a game which um, had a lot of flaws to it, but not necessarily in the game itself, more about the circumstances surrounding it. Um, Project Zero, Maiden of the Black Water. Now, this was a game that got announced, like, how long ago was this fucking thing announced? It was a crazy long time ago, and I've waited and waited and waited for it. And I finally got it, and as a big fan of the Project Zero series, I can safely say I enjoyed it, you know? But they kind of mucked it up in a sense that they made it digital only in America, and some of you might be thinking, oh, at least we got it at all, but in this, the circumstances surrounding this particular game, it's pretty much worse than, like, what you'd normally get because most Wii U's can't even hold this game, you know, it's over 8 gigabytes. My Wii U can't hold it, which is why in Europe they had this very limited run of this collector's edition, which I was very happy to pick up, you know, and yeah, it's why they don't just release the disc version out there just for anybody who wants to pick it up, I don't know, but we got it and it was a really good horror game, you know. Um, it wasn't like, yeah, I, th I think the reception was relatively mixed, but I thought it was excellent, I enjoyed it so much, so... Project Zero Five. I don't know where this series is gonna go from here. Please don't do another camera obscure. Uh, what was it called? Spirit camera. The cursed memoir. Please don't do another one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Four more to go. Um, I suppose I'll talk about this first because I'm um, not beaten this yet. I'm only thirty hours in, but god damn it, if it isn't one of the best things I've played this year based on that thirty hours. Xenoblade Chronicles X. I'll, I'll do a full video on this, probably, so not much point talking about it now, but let's just say I am very, very heavily invested in this game right now. I have to pull myself away from it so I could do this video. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Fucking excellent. Right, um, next we have a couple of PS4 games. Uh, you, I already mentioned that I got really into Dragon Quest this year, you know? Um, I played like three games in a row and I, I actually really tired myself out uh, at the end of it. Um, but I intend to like uh, play some more uh, in 2016 because it, it really is a wonderful series. And to sort of cap that off, I keep playing with my fucking friends. To sort of cap that off, like my little Dragon Quest phase, this sort of came out near the end of the year. Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes. Um, it's funny, you know. Hyrule Warriors that came out last year for the Wii U, that wasn't like, I liked it, you know, but it didn't really stick with me, you know, I just kind of beat the story mode and 
that was it, you know, that was, that was me. But with this, I really stuck with it a lot, you know, I was keen to do as many side quests as I could. Um, I guess I got into the story a bit more, you know. Um, maybe it was probably because Dragon Quest was more fresh in my mind, and I was still like pretty excited about being in the series and that, and this just came out at the right time. But yeah, I can. I really think this is a lot better than uh, Hyrule Warriors, personally. So, yeah, Dragon Quest Heroes. Give us Dragon Quest Eleven Square. I want that. <laughs> right, and um, next. Oh fuck. Next, um, this, um, I thought for a while this could be my game of the year, but it's been kind of, uh, beaten out by something which is, uh, kind of, like, Tearaway Unfolded. I loved Tearaway on the Vita. Wonderful game. And now we have, like, this updated version, uh, for the PS4, and it was excellent. I'm, yeah, I think I did a review on this, um, so you can go watch that if you want, but... This was one of the best things I played this year, hands down. You know me, I love myself a good 3D platformer, and this totally delivered with that, you know? Um, can't wait for Media Molecule's next game, Dreams. It'll be nothing like this, which sucks, but whatever that studio does tends to be really good, so we'll see what the future holds. And uh, the last game, uh, you can all probably, like, guess this, actually. I went on about it so much, and... Yeah, it's um, Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky, the second chapter. It was, this, yeah. Here's the first chapter right here. I play, I replayed this, um, this year, you know, to try and, like, remind myself of how much I, I love this and, like, get myself ready for the second chapter. Because you can't play the second chapter without playing this, okay? The game just outright assumes you've just literally came off it. It doesn't give you any, like, room to, like, breathe or recap or anything, you know? But, it's... Guys, I tried to make a video about six times, right? Not even exaggerating there, about six times I tried to make a video on how much I love Trails in the Sky. You know, this RPG which has become my favourite RPG of all time. And I can never do it! Because... I spend, I spend a good 20 minutes rambling when really all I need to say is I like it a lot. That's really the fucking gist of it. It's just a game that I happen to really, really, really like. I don't have a reason. I just really like it. It's, it's so weird. It's how a game can come out and just like everything it does, just like um, I use this expression a lot, you know, it ticks all the right boxes for you and Trails in the Sky really did that for me, you know? Um, and I highly, highly recommend you guys check it out. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the best, it's, well, it's the best RPG I've ever played, <laughs> in my opinion, you know, so. Yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much that. Yeah. Not exactly a top ten, top eight, I guess. Well, again, they weren't really in order, I'm just putting up in front of the camera. Trails in the Sky was probably game of the year, but again, mega biased there, so, yeah. That's that, guys. See you after. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, and a happy new year.